Howdy folks, and welcome back to the mountain. Uh, a lot of you have been asking about the sawmill. You want to see a video of the sawmill, so today we're going to give you just that. Uh, those of you that watched the build a video on the woodshed, you saw that I was a little shy on 2 by 4 so today we're going to cut up a couple logs. We're going to uh, go ahead and make up my 2x6s, uh, rather, not 2 by 4s and I also got to make some strapping for the roof. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, the sawmill hasn't been run yet this season yet, so we got to put a blade on it. Uh, get it ready and fire it up and then we'll load it up. So hang on and here we go All right, here we are. This is a wood miser LT 15. That's a fully manual saw, saw Sawmill, which is all we really need because we just bought it to build our own outbuilding So first thing we got to do we got to put a new blade on it Blades go in here on the wheels First thing you need to do is you got to open up your blade this is a bit of a trick in by itself because, as you can see, the blade's coiled. Well, we have to uncoil it without cutting ourselves. So, you may want to take a step back there. So uncoil this. There's different ways of doing it. I just do it this way. People have actually been known just to throw it on the ground. So, there we go. It's uncoiled. Now we got to mount it in the sawmill. Goes up through here through the guides. And we're going out on the wheels like that. And give it a little turn here. And there we go. Now we're going to come back and set the tension on the blade. It's pretty simple. This handle right here. We lift that up, it's got a cam, and that sets, sets the tension. I got a little guide back here to check on the tension. It looks good. We won't get into that. We'll go ahead and close the doors up. And we'll fire it up and run it for a second, and that way we'll see if the tension's good. Um, I close the doors just in case some something is off on the guide. And we don't want the uh, blade to come flying out. With the doors closed, it'll just hit inside. So we'll go ahead and fire this up. Hopefully, she fires right up. That's enough to make sure that the blade's tracking good. We don't want the blade coming off as we're trying to cut a log. So you, you track it by the distance it sticks out from the wheels. This actually looks really good. So we're going to leave it like that. Our guides are good. All right. Now, next thing we want to do, since we haven't run it yet, this is just automatic transmission fluid. We want to make sure to lube up the bearings and the guides. Just put a little bit of automatic transmission fluid on there. Keeps the sawdust so it doesn't gum up everything. We're actually going to put some along the track too. Now we'll go ahead and 
run the head up and down the track a couple times. You can drop the head down a little bit. Now with this sawmill, you can either push manually or you can take this crank and run it down. Smooth there. Alright, we're doing good. So now we're going to go ahead and load up a log. Clamp it up. Let's take a quick peek at this thing. See what we got to. Right. Go ahead and clamp this up. blade first cuts in the bark. I'm probably going to cut about here. And I just want to make sure that there's no dirt in the bark that really dulls the blade. Take a quick measurement of this thing. We've got 12 and a half inches on the narrow side and 13 and a half inches there so it's only about a half an inch difference well it's a full inch but on each side half an inch so i'm not going to bother to raise this one up but let's go ahead and take our first cut and see what we get
So here we go. This is the first time anybody has ever seen inside of this tree. And you can see the grain's pretty good. We got a couple of black knots here. Those are just from older branches from back when the tree was younger that have since died, but that's not a big deal. Um, we're going to go ahead and flip this 180 and cut the other side of it now. So we're going to clamp it. I did do this, cut this tree last fall, so I'm not sure the length. I think it's an eight footer. Yep, that's an eight footer. Now, before we go too far with this, we notice these stops are a little high. I want kind of want to push them down a little bit because we don't want to hit them with the blade. Oh, we're gonna have to unclamp this. Thing. Really does a number on the blade when you had a backstop or a clamp. Alright. Is that one low enough? What's that? Is that first one low enough? Yep. We're not going to be going that far down before we roll it. make our first cut. turn it on the, do a 90 degree turn and we'll take the top off that one and then we'll see what we're going to get for boards out of this thing. So I want to put my stops back up full just while I'm turning it. thing I want to I want to check make sure that it's 90 degrees from this face to this face so I take my square and we are perfect just means that my stops are 90 degrees like they should be we do want to lower this down a little bit
Oh, I see one a little too, just a hair too much. There we go. So we're good. Now we can go ahead and cut the top of this one. I have a lot of bark on the loose side, so I'm actually going to take it down another inch and then we'll do another 180. board here we're going to save because we can edge it and take off this bark and probably get a one by four out of it so we're going to save this one now we're going to put another one we're going to put this down 180 and then we can do the other side and start getting our boards out of it right now we've got 10 inch wide board I'm actually shooting for two by six this so. time. six inches out of that. So let's find out. Yeah, we're only going to get six out of that, so we'll get five two by sixes out of this one. Now once we get to a 90 degree edge here, we don't need these stops anymore. Because we got these built-in stops. It just goes up again. So, in our clamps, we can use these old guys. Oh, not quite yet on that one. But we can probably use it over here. So as you can see, the bark over here, that comes at about six inches. So I'm going to cut this down to six inches and I can flip it. I can get five two by sixes out of it.
right, so what I've done here, I've made this six inches. We're gonna keep these boards. Once again, this one here is a little thick. This is like an inch and a quarter. This is a really nice piece of wood right here. It's got a little bit of waning on this side. So um, I didn't want to use that as a two by six, although I could have. But this is some really, really nice lumber here, as you can see. The grain on this piece is absolutely gorgeous. So we're going to keep this one with these. Now what we're going to do, since this is, this is now six inches by ten inches, so we can now get five two by six out of this. I think I had ten inches. Yep, so now we can get five two by sixes out of this. Every rotation of my dial is two inches, so when I do half or one, it's one inch. If I do a full, it's two inches. I do have a guide here I can go down 10 inches or what I like to do a lot of times is I just lower my blade down until it just kisses the wood. And look at that, right at 10 inches where it should be. And what I can do, I can do a full rotation and I'm down 2 inches. So now when I cut this I will have a 2 by 6 I just want to get these out of my way because on the next cut I'm going to be even with them all. I just don't want the blade to hit the ones I just cut. So since we're going to be using these right away, we're just going to throw them on the forks. And we can bring them over to where we're building. So let's go ahead and make our last cut, get our last two 2 by 6s Again, we do a full turn for two inches. So there you go folks, there's how we use our sawmill to make lumber here up on the mountain. Uh, these are just 2x6's to finish off with the woodshed. Um, we, we 
we are going to be making more buildings. Uh, hopefully in a year or two we're going to make a barn. We'll cut it all with this puppy right here. Um, none of the good goes to none of the wood goes goes to waste. Uh, the stuff I threw over there, the stuff that we're not going to be cutting the boards from, we burn that both in our fire pit when we make uh, maple syrup. We can even use it in the wood stove in the house once it's dry. So other than that, um, that's how we do it up here on the mountain. Um, this video is a little long, I understand, but everybody wanted to see the sawmill. There you go. That's how I use it. Um, other than that, folks, have a great night. Uh, don't forget to hit the sub, um, subscribe button and ring the bell, and we'll see you later. God, God bless.